Albuquerque Public Schools is the largest district in the state. Stan Wilson also sat down with Roseanne McKernan from the Office of Accountability and Reporting at APS to learn how the district is evaluating park data so far and what the results might mean for students and parents. Joining me now is Rose Ann McKernan with Albuquerque Public Schools. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Rose Ann, according to the latest statewide assessment of elementary and middle school students, only about one in four of New Mexico's students grades three through eight demonstrated competency in math and language, English language skills on the park assessments. What do these results reveal from a data perspective? Uh, you know, PARC this year was, this past year was our first time uh, administering it. So it definitely is a baseline. Uh, it, it gives us some information at test skills, mastery, and application. So it gives us some information about where we are uh, in meeting the state standards. It's uh, a first pass at that. Um, it tries to frame those application problems in real world situations for our students and it will give the teachers some information about how they're moving towards the state standards. From a district perspective, it helps us start some conversations with teachers as we look across districts or across our schools to uh, see if they have the right instructional materials, if they need different instructional materials, if they're interested in learning about more effective strategies. But, just to reinforce that it, it's our first first pass with PART. Did anything surprise you? Uh, the 11th grade English language arts is exceptionally high and we're very excited about that. Um, it tests writing and reading, uh, not only to the traditional mechanics of English language arts, but being able to compare multiple passages. Uh, we're very pleased with how our 11th graders did. Even though it's early on, what is the benefit of park testing versus standardized tests in, in, that you've used in the past? Um, I think, first of all, the park assessment is aligned to the new state standards. Um, so that's, that's a real plus. Our former state assessment was aligned to our older state standards. Um, the advantage, I think, of using PARC is that our goal is to graduate students college and career ready. So PARC is um, one way of making sure our students have the knowledge and the skills to think critically and problem solve creatively. Um, so it gives us that information. It helps us see how we might be progressing as some other states who are using PARC. So it's kind of a, across the board. And how will you evaluate student performance for those who opt out when parents choose to opt out of the PARC testing? You know, we, we have a, a, a gentleman we work with that's from the Navy and he refers to PARC as one of our navigational fixes. He says, you know, when you're sailing you use fixes to make sure you are on course and you arrive at your destination and you can make the course corrections you need to. PARC is one of those ways that we do that. There are others that we use at common formative assessments across our district. And probably the most important fix that we use for navigating to the standards is those everyday assessments that teachers use, those projects, those problems that children solve either independently or as a group, uh, the homework assignments and those chat classroom tests that sure. teachers and use. So what would be an example of um, how educators and parents can apply the park testing results to, to enhance um, learning in real life situations? Well, I think first and foremost is parents need to look at the standards and you can do that on our website um, and understand what your students are learning. Uh, I think the next thing is to give your students opportunities to apply what they're learning. Uh, we've all talked about baking and cooking and using fractions when you do that, but building a walkway. Um, look, when you watch TV, start talking about what do you think the writer's intent was? How does this show com and the main theme from this show compare to another show you've watched? Get beyond the who, what, when, where, and why and get into really uh, thinking about the author's purpose. And so when you evaluate the, the depth and scope of this data, uh, how will you use it to evaluate students and teachers? Our state actually uses uh, the park assessments to evaluate teachers. We use it to look at how we're supporting teachers, um, where we need to provide different professional development, where we need to uh, beef up the instructional materials that we provide teachers, uh, how we might provide more uh, professional development even to principals. Okay. And finally, what 
um, it makes you optimistic about this use of testing versus the others that we've had in the past? What makes me optimistic about this test versus the others in the past is that I think it's more closely aligned to the standards that, um, that our state has adopted and that it has more real, real world application kinds of op opportunities for students in different ways. You know, we've all done the bubble test and there is certainly uh, multiple choice items on this test, but there are other opportunities for students to really attack a problem from a very creative way and still earn that credit. Roseanne, appreciate you coming on. Thank you for being here. Thank you.